Oh, hello. My name is Dilly G, and that's Johnny H. Welcome to John and Dylan Online. This week we're talking about a man who defined Instagram in the early 2010s, Dan Bolzarian. Ladies and gentlemen, we are talking about maybe my favorite asshole of the last 10 years. Not the best asshole, not the worst asshole, my personal favorite one. The biggest douche ever, Dan Balzerian. You may know him from recently appearing very bloated on a lot of former Navy SEALs podcasts trying to reclaim the fame. Dan Balzerian is so fascinating because he's a social media asshole douche bro pre-politics. That is very interesting. He was, yeah, he was fully famous off of Instagram by the time Trump came in. So he's like right wing adjacent, but really what he's doing is just like financial crimes. He l- what he's really doing is a large scale financial crime. But what he's famous for is being like the first person on Instagram to be like, I'm going to rent a boat and pay some sex workers to hang out with me so I can convince people that I own this boat and these chicks just want to slurp my knob because I'm the most YOLO guy of all time. I mean, he is the most YOLO guy of all time. First of all, you only live once, so you know what you're going to do? You're going to grow up in a household that's mega rich because your dad is a laughable 80s villain, villain Gordon Gecko style. He specialized in mergers, acquisitions, and making those things happen even if no one involved wanted them to happen, and it turned out to be a massive fraud so he could get money. He's eventually jailed for this. Dan Balzerian's reaction is, it's weird to go to high school when people know your dad's in jail, which... That really points to him being something. Something's wrong with his brain. And then he, out of nowhere, just starts claiming that he won a bunch of poker tournaments. You can't look up also my girlfriends in Canada. Now I have all this money. That's the that's the Dan Balzerian yes, origin it is story. The, uh, if he went to summer camp in Canada, he did the, yeah, my girlfriend lives in Quebec. You'll never meet her, but I have one. Oh, my God. I went that to was s- his, yeah. Dylan, what's even crazier is I went to summer camp in Quebec. People didn't even believe that I was there. They just thought I was hiding in my mom's basement for the summer. <laughs> uh, my favorite thing is the interview he has with Larry King where when Larry King's really old because it's not so much of an interview as Larry King just asks a bunch of questions. Then it goes, all right, he answered that one. It's like interns handed Larry King questions, and then he goes, what's your name, Dan Bilzerian? All right. Sounds like a right name. Is that Larry King for the first time? And Larry King, like, literally was, like, Larry King could be interviewing Hitler. <laughs> He'd be like, so, Adolf, how is that marriage going? <laughs> and Dan Bolzerian is the first person that Larry King is like, what has it become for Lair that I'm talking to this bearded simp? Like, he's so, it's the only time I've ever seen Larry King, a man who's been married eight times, reflect. And what caused him to reflect was a guy with, a guy who does the opposite of every cut guy, which is only does legs. That's the other thing that's amazing about Dan Bolzerian, focuses on the legs. I'll let the torso slip. I'll tell you what the money muscles are. Thighs thick. Really? I think, I think, I mean, you can't really say anything, man. He's a hot guy. He's not a hot guy. And let me say this. That is I thought not, about, that's a lie, John. That's a lie. I'm not lying. I'm Even not lying. He shaves. Me, he has a really good, solid jawline. You can say a lot of things about Dan Bilzerian. He's a liar. No, no Dylan. He, um, he, obviously, the financial crimes. He's an idiot. We're not. But he's hot. We're not. No. Wrong. You're not. He is not hot. What he is is he is. Dan Balzerian is what bros think babes want from a dude. He's got a gun. You can almost see his penis, and I'm pretty sure he's got a bunch of weed. <laughs> like, you know what I mean? Like, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he's cool. <laughs> he's not cool. Here's my favorite thing about the Larry King interview: is oh, that's good. <laughs> For those of you who don't realize, and you can't see, Dylan just lost his webcam, and this recording has been beset with technical difficulties from beginning to end. And this is just the, this is the most recent and therefore largest of the wounds. Well, Dylan fixes that. I will give you some background on Dan Belzerian. If case uh, you don't know who he is, Dan Belzerian uh, is from upstate New York. He has one brother. Um, basically, in high school, his dad does go to jail for financial crimes. He heads over to uh, college where he claims he uh, discovered poker and went broke in his sophomore year. That was the only time he was a gambling addict. He then um, rehabbed it. He has claimed that he uh, was in the army and could have done SEAL training because he's so fucking tough. 
Um, but they kicked him out because his supervisor was a little bitch. And let me say this about the Navy. And I'm a little biased. My brother is uh, my brother is in the Canadian Naval Reserve, so my heart my heart is with the ocean, as we know. But I love both the Randy Orton situation and the Dan Balzerian situation is the best because the Navy is just they are making it so you believe they're wearing those white uniforms for a reason because they are such ninnies when it comes to like facts about their soldiers in a way that I really appreciate. And the Dan Balzerian's like. I'll tell you why I did it. I, I broke my legs so many different times. They wouldn't let me do it because I'm so good. My instructor was like, his dick's too big to be a Navy SEAL. That's why he kissed my wife. He's pro- My wife likes him. That's why he can't be a Navy SEAL. And the Navy's like, he broke his leg. You can't you can't train to be a Navy SEAL with a broken leg. Then he left the Navy. Yeah, he lied. Like, what the fuck? He lied it's and he also lied in a way where it's very easy to track. I won $50 million. Oh, so As good. As I was saying, the best thing about that Larry King interview is that he – tells part of like how he got all his money and it's like he says he won like 20 million dollars on a on a game uh on a boat and he de- he just describes Maverick he describes the movie Maverick he's like yeah I went on a boat my dad was there uh I was a really big poker player me and my dad always play poker against each other my dad's James Garner my name's Mel Gibson <laughs> And on the last <laughs> card, I made a wish, and it came true. And Larry yeah, King's like, yeah, sure. Like, he doesn't follow it up. He's the, the job of an interviewer is, like, you have Dan Bilzerian. Push him a bit on something. But Dan no. Bilzerian's like, that's when I achieved flight. And he's like, sounds fine. Because, D- Dylan, you have to remember, D- Dan Bilzerian is the last person baby boomers are meeting when they're in their mind. They're like, the internet, what's all this about? You know what I mean? Like, they're on Facebook, but they're just on. Like, for a lot of these people... They've only been using the internet. Like, I just got on Instagram last year. It's one photo of me at my own birthday my daughter took, and I don't like it. Like, you have, they don't know who he is. <laughs> They've just been told, this is now a famous – this man's big on the internet in a way when internet's killing all these media companies. So they're like, okay, this guy's big. And also Dan Balzerian, unlike other internet celebrities at the time – looks like a american celebrity he's cut he looks like he could be in a marvel movie he has a hipster beard like all of it's clearly constructed he's got a hipster beard so they think i'm a millennial hipster beard style i'm cut so they think i'm hot that's cool i keep talking about money in this weird way i and also the thing is poker was really big on the internet Gamergate and politics destroyed it but that's also why he's using poker as his origin story that is a defined community within the internet that'll will either way be talking about him, which grows his fame. What Dan Bilzerian figured out is the internet, it doesn't matter if they love you or hate you. For a brief period of time, if enough people are talking about you, other people will be like, this guy's the most famous man on the internet. And then it's like, what are they saying? Um, he's a fraud. They're, he's famous, though, so get him on the TV. I think it. I think it's... You may be reading into it too much. I think he's just a fucking bro asshole who is like... I'm not. I'll just say I won it on poker, and uh, also I'll post a bunch of photos because I got my dad's money now, and I'm going to buy a bunch of prostitutes. People will fucking think they're real, and then I rented a boat that I'm going to say is mine. Also, I dress like G.I. Joe while I'm at yacht parties. First of all, Dylan, he dresses like G.I. Joe Extreme. Make an error like that again, and the podcast is over, as is your life. Okay. He should have dressed like Snake. Whoa. That would be sweet. Yeah, we should talk more about... S- Can I just say, did you ever play Metal Gear Solid? Because I didn't realize that video game nerds can make a video game about a cool army guy really come across like Zelda. When they talk about... Um, <laughs> people that are into Metal, Metal Gear or Solid really make shooting people digitally seem like you're trying to find an ocarina. Like, it's there really... is magic in it for some reason. I played my first Metal Gear Solid game over the pandemic, and I was like, there's a lot more magic. I thought it was just sneaking up on guys and stabbing them, but like... No, there's like magic powers. I'm like, all right. It sounds like you came up with a story 75% of the way and then let someone's four-year-old son write the rest of it. It's like how I didn't play Halo until like earlier this year. I bought Halo. So where I'm sitting right now, every once in a while, I just fire up Halo and shoot me some fucking aliens. And Halo out of context is very weird because it's written in that 2000s way where like he's tough, but everyone's very jokey. So they don't know how to pitch the humor, so they're like, ha, Master Chief's here. He's probably deformed because of the mask. Okay, <laughs> and then you're like, wait, what? That's what you say to me before I go to do battle with the fucking Covenant? Yeah, I'm not coming back, man. 
Master Queef. We showed my son Spider Man from the nineties, and my yes. wife made a good uh, made a good observation, which is every woman there not even has some; they have huge fucking tits. Oh like, my god! Like this... He's just gonna grow up thinking that women automatically have bazungas. And we watched the old Batman, and my favorite thing is like you may have to go to the way they wrote things in the 60s because you could not have anything approaching like that, I don't know, the body positivity movement just didn't need to happen because everyone was thin but also out of shape. And the vil- the difference between a villain and a non-villain was the villains are all smoking cigarettes. Yeah, so like, that's cor- you're as correct. As soon as I butt this out, I'm going to get on Batman, but... A Marlboro does make life better. And that's straight from the Riddler, my friend. How do you know he's a villain? He's smoking an unfiltered cigarette. <laughs> Batman smokes cigarettes and the Joker smokes cigars. It's no, no, it's the other way thing. around. You're, it's the other way. It would be the other way around, you piece of shit. Oh, yeah, it would be like celebratory yeah. cigar for Batman, Joker smoking cigarettes. I mean, I got to say this right now, though. Do we start smoking cigarettes again? I'm not. <laughs> I mean, I'm, anno- I'm coming around to it. I mean, I'm listen. I'm not. You let me know when you get there, because I, <laughs> I don't. I'm not ready yet. But I say, you know what? If Trump wins, let's start smoking cigarettes again. <laughs> <laughs> Trump wins, we win. Back to flavor country. That's what we'll okay. say. Yeah, which is what I refer to Dan Balzerian as. So what's very interesting about Dan Balzerian is it's. Every trick and trope that every comedian is now trying to use to become famous enough to play a comedy club in America, Dan Balzerian invented or perfected. There's also a bunch of stuff within the manosphere that he either aped or he either sort of like stuff like the beard, the real short shorts, all this sort of stuff about like there's a certain interview style he also does that I think all of this, I think, is also, by the way, to uh to create a massive grift, which he does, which is his company, Ignite. So as he's coming on to Instagram and stuff like that, he's constantly talking about his military experience, all the stuff he's done. The third thing he keeps talking about is what's his goal. Now, Dylan, how does he phrase his goal? He says his goal was to get a bunch of chicks without having to talk to him. That, that was not his goal. That's his, li- that's his religion. His goal was, <laughs> I got all this attention. I'm going to create a brand. That's what he he always mentions that in all of his interviews. Is he's like, I think I'm ready to create my brand. I think I'm ready for my brand. Now, the reason why Dan Balzerian is constantly talking about this, and I am so fascinated by Dan Balzerian, is because his fucking dad, Paul, old Popper Paul Balzerian, is a massive convicted financial criminal and uses Dan Balzerian. Dan Balzerian's a dumb idiot who was manipulated by his dad to pretend to be a poker star so he could build a brand. Uh, his dad orchestrates everything behind him. His dad was part of his staff. His dad was always there, but they could never put him on the books because it's Dan Balzerian's dad was such a financial criminal. He's not allowed to have any corporate job where he would have any sort of governance over the money. Like he's like, <laughs> you're, so, <laughs> it's so crazy. You're such a bad financial criminal. You're not allowed to go into the bank. Why? I don't know what you'll do in the <laughs> But you'll do something. Yeah. You were arrested for assault so many times. If I see you clinching a fist, even if it is to hold an object in your fist, like if you ever hold a spoon, you're under arrest. Correct. It would be like if someone wanted to change me and Dylan's lifestyles, they just banned us from any place that might have Rocky Road ice cream. (laughs) Yeah. I'm not allowed to write swear words into video games anymore, and I'll never stop. Yeah, you'll never stop. I have a PlayStation 3 just so I can name guys tit butt. I got a fucking Xbox, whatever the one. Every character in it's called Come. Even if I have to hack into the system and change the code of Grand Theft Auto 6 so it doesn't really work <laughs> anymore. Yeah, he, uh, Dan Balzerian claims to have had sex with 10,000 women, three per day. So, um, yeah, it's three per day. He also was claimed to have sex with a variety of celebrities he can't name in the best way ever. Did you see that? Because there's a couple of real, you know, like Christina oh, Applegate while well, she had a mastectomy. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, Elizabeth Taylor after she's dead. Joan Rivers, that was the reason she died. Melissa Rivers, she watched. <laughs> you ever seen Kill Bill? You know Buck? That's me. <laughs> that was based on me. Uh, you know Kill Bill where that guy tries to fuck the woman in the coma? 
My dad did that, and then I was born. <laughs> what, he fucked a woman in a coma? No, while I was being born, he sold a bunch of fucks to a comatose woman somewhere else in the hospital. Oh, God. And they stole my dad's life story and made Kill Bill out of it. Anyway. Yeah, they stole my life story and made Schindler's List out of it, only they added that weird guy <laughs> Schindler. <laughs> Here's a crazy, because now he says he wants to be monogamous. Okay, yeah, so here's That's what's basically happened with Dan Balzerian. I always feel okay. weird doing these episodes because I feel like I weird Dylan out with how much I know and have not researched. Because here's what you guys don't know. This episode started from me being in a dead sleep, awoken by Dylan's phone call, and I'm coming in hardcore. But it is, is Dan Balzerian became the archetype of a bunch of manosphere influencers of like how he presented himself, also how he conducts his interviews, and then he talks in this very slow, annoying style. So actually the interviewer has to do a lot more of the work to make it an exciting thing because it's their video and they care. Um, and you can see that from all the weird sort of Larry King wannabe interviews that appear in like your feeds if you watch video podcasts, and you'll see that fucking Graham Bezinger and like all those weird former things that were on Aura TV. He appeared on all of those, and he uh, he does the thing that like a bunch of people now do, which is he talks very annoying and slowly, and then it's up to the other people to make it exciting and interesting, and then he'll drop like a crazy interesting tidbit like, "Oh, my boat's made of cum," and that'll be the end of the thing. Like it's like it's just <laughs> it's all a manipulation. And what's very interesting is I don't know if Dan Balzerian <laughs> my is boats made of cum. Like, he's, but you watch his interviews; they're all just sort of like, um, "Yeah, I went to school." I, um, I, uh, poker is fun. My penis is an Uzi and it shoots bullets made of blood. When those go into women, they make full grown adults. I'm my dad's dad. Like he's trying super hard in the pictures and then that he posts on Instagram and then he's like, acts like you're a fucking weirdo for wanting to like interview him. Yeah, I agree. Exactly correct. He's like, what? Well, uh, I, I thought know, you were a man. man. Uh, Dan, you've posted 11 photos of you in capri pants wearing an Oxford shirt. If we're basing this off of uh, uh, typical identifiers of masculinity, um, all of my family will beat you up purely for posing for a photograph. Well, then he was thrown out of school for bringing, apparently, bringing a machine gun to school, which I think he just no, didn't happen, been, and then he just, thinks that's oh. a cool thing to say. So a lot of his staff have now left, by the way. So a lot of his staff have now outed... That's complete bullshit. Um, as is most of his military records, pretty spotty and pretty ridiculous. He's yeah, just a he super rich kid. He was a kid. Navy He's... SEAL that trained on two broken legs and then made it two days before graduation. Before they, um, before they were like, "No, you can't graduate." And then other people are like, "You know how much it costs to train a Navy SEAL?" Yeah, that would have been they would just been like, "Yeah, it's fuck it." We raced it. We wasted like two million dollars. First of all, in an other earlier interviews, you can't find them as much anymore. But I've been on the Dan Bilzerian train since fucking early COVID, so I know shit. Is that he also claimed he was like, um, I put my gun together too fast, and my supervisor never liked it. He put that. He said that, <laughs> which is just so good. It's that's the only true thing I think he's ever said. That's the only thing I think he's ever said that he was like, they'll believe this. I'm up to this. It's so. It's fucking crazy. It's crazy well, that... I love well, it. I love the fact that a guy can be like, yeah, I don't know. Probably all stems from the fact that we showered together and my supervisor saw that I his wife's exact lipstick on the head of my hug, so probably because yeah. his wife sucked me off. What's crazy is uh, that you don't know why I didn't make it in the Navy SEALs? They knew I'd be better than them. Yeah, I broke the records for how much balls you could have. I have four. Now, Dylan, we've got a... We've got a full 19 minutes in this episode without mentioning weird Canadian stand-up comedy, and that streak ends now. Dan Bilzerian <laughs> is the closest internet celebrity to having a relationship with the truth that comedians I used to have to open for in the in the middle 2000s and then early 2010s all had. Like his same sort of like... Like, shows up with a bunch of women. I remember one comedian rented a limo to go to the Hamilton Yuck Yucks. He's, he's like, it's my cool. birthday on Wednesday. You got to fake it till you make it. And I'm like, that's cool, though. What are you talking about, man? Or the guy that said the Eagles were in his hotel room. And then he's like, and then the other comedian's like, can I see the Eagles? And he's like, the Eagles are busy. It was like Aurora Borealis and the Simpsons. 
It's even better. It was Kenny Robinson who lived two floors above Big John Woodbury, went down and banged on his door and went, I want to meet the Eagles, John, and wouldn't leave. He was like, I'm in that great way that we've all been, which is this man's a liar and the lies end fucking now. I'm winning. <laughs> I want to meet the Eagles. The Eagles are busy. I, I want to meet that. the Eagles. I had this story told to me firsthand by the guy that did this, and he was literally banging on a table in a bar in Ottawa going, I'm smacking the door, and I'm going, I want to meet the Eagles, John, and he's going to open that door. And he opens it a crack and goes, the Eagles need chips. Can you get me chips? And then he just slammed the door, and I, I couldn't I – could, he was like – he – he outlined me, and I was like, "That's." I really respect that you were like, "Okay, I can't." I the fact that he's not giving it up here, this is pretty impressive. <laughs> the Eagles need chip. So, this is my favorite part of Dan Bilzerian's entire thing: is that he tried during the Vegas shooting. Now, keep this in mind: this is the biggest shooting in the history of the United States. <laughs> He's just gunning people down in Las Vegas. And Dan Bilzerian, this is on the live stream, walks up to a cop and says, give me your gun. The cop goes. Yeah. And then, like, bear in mind, they're, they're taking cover while there's active fire happening from a lover of prostitutes and fascism from the fucking Mirage. Yeah. Like, it's actively still happening. And Dan Bilzerian, I assume, was filming an Instagram video with a drone or something horrific. <laughs> no, he's just ran. walking around with his fucking thing in Vegas. He turns his phone on, and he's like, that is that is the fucking, and I've seen this before, that is the fucking craziest thing where there's actually something fucked up happening, and people are like, good time for content. <laughs> That's fucking crazy. I mean, I've had to now at more than one funeral tell people to put their phones away. Oh, they're, and they're, what, are they watching lit vids, or they're just being like, yo, just here with the corpse? One one funeral in particular, I saw someone literally go like get ready to be like, here we and I I put them on the shoulder and I went, this is not for the internet, and I know that that person is pissed at me to this day. And by the way, if they have taken photos of that, I and put them online, I'm gonna drop some secrets I know about them. You know what I mean? <laughs> oh, like what? I'm not gonna say it here because it's it's one of those. You know how we drop fun secrets, Dylan. This is not one of those fun secrets. This is one of those. This person might have to sue me for putting this out there, but I'm gonna win in that court case. <laughs> they taught a dog to dance, and then the dog became a human being because of no, the power of dance. No, they're a dog fucker. The secret's out. They fuck okay. dogs, <laughs> and I took the photos. Look, I needed some money. We were coming out of the pandemic, and I wasn't like a dog pimp, but I did hold the camera. He brought the dogs. I just I didn't like it. I only did it like 18, 19, 20 times. I did it. I'm still doing it. I'm doing it right now. It's why I was late. Another fantastic uh, Larry King thing is that uh, he feeds him because Larry King's just fucking. Larry King's frustrating because it's watching a guy who acts like he does hard journalism be like, let's get right to the issue. Oh. Scrambled or over easy. Yeah, that's all right. No fucking pussyfooting, Dan. Mm. Is it Dan or Danny? <laughs> It's Larry Dan. King here with Vladimir Putin. Yeah. Vladimir, the question that's on everyone's mind. Polish or Russian vodka? Ooh, I do. Can I kiss your fucking feet? Can I kiss Vla your, smooch your little feet? I love war crimes. A um, couple of things you should also know. I checked the Larry King videos. I'm pretty sure he dyed his hair specifically because Dan Bolzarian was coming in and he had muscles. <laughs> Dan, can I come to one of your parties? Can we Can we hang out after this? That's that'd Dan, be a great it's question. me, Larry. I, I'm looking for wife number nine. Can I come to one of your parties where all of your property uses the pool the way I want them to use my face? As a toilet. Yes. Can I drink your pool water after the prostitutes have been in there? That's the only question I have. Answer it. Take 20 minutes. I don't care. I'm taking that water, Dan. You fucking bitch. I'll fucking take your water. Hi, Dan. It's me, Larry King. I'm taking money from uh, a propaganda arm of a country that will eventually invade the Ukraine, but I'll be dead then. Um, can I watch you poo? <laughs> it was a bit of crazy for Larry King to interview Dan Vilzerian, because in his mind, it's like, Okay, this guy is just taking pictures of one aspect of what Robert Evans used to do. Robert Evans made the godfather, you useless fuck. You're yeah. just taking his life. 
The Godfather, yeah. Robert Evans did all of that to relax. Dan, Robert Evans lived <laughs> Dan Balzerian's life because he was on coke and trying to just relax. I've had 82 and alls, and I tried to get that cop to give me a gun. Um, yeah, uh, there's no cop here, Bob. You're just in your bedroom. <laughs> Where's Allie McGraw? It's 2010, uh, Bob Evans. She's dead, I think. <laughs> That's the interesting thing, though. Like, at least Robert Evans, you hang out with him, it'd be annoying, but he has things to say. I don't think Dan Bilzerian has anything to say. He's just like, you see what I just did? Yeah, he had sex with someone you paid for. Yeah. What's, cra- what's, what's crazy, crazy is Robert Evans apparently used to be around the comedy store and the improv because those things are, in L.A., those things are located relatively close to those guys' houses. And it's like the closest they can still get to show business. So apparently he would just like show up and drink champagne wearing like the nicest suit you've ever seen at the back of the fucking improv, like by himself. Uh, and then just would give weird compliments like oh, such verve, such verve. And then just like get into like an old Mercedes driven by someone. They're like, what the fuck? And they're like, that was Bob Evans. He definitely enjoyed being Bobby Evans, baby. Uh, yeah. Another thing that Dan Bilzerian, of course, does charity uh for wounded veterans such as and this is from the larry king interview getting them to come to parties and then getting sex workers to do do it with them it's very weird it's also the only time that i hear about that charity in dan balzarian's life and that i think that he just thought it up on the way there and then leaving his dad was like hey, man, no we're not we're not giving money to charity i'm stealing that money dan dan that's the money i'm stealing <laughs> well or something like yeah his dad's good with money he knows like i read a, i watched a video about some other youtuber and uh he did a thing where he gave everyone presents who he worked for but it was just because that he was like at the precipice of a new tax bracket so by giving them presents he could write it off and stay in a, another tax bracket oh so yeah there's like, a few yeah. What's very amazing is all, and Dan Bilzerian was one of the first victims of this, of the YouTuber documentary makers where they, as soon as you see like the rise and fall of this YouTuber, and let me tell you, I'm fucking addicted to them. They are so satisfying and good. And the Dan Bilzerian one, there are so many different versions because this guy's had so many different falls because we're all building to Dylan. The very exciting time he launches his brand. What's his brand called? And what is it centered Ignite. around? Ignite. And what's it? How does he pitch it? It's like weed, but with muscles. No, it's so much better. Booze, tobacco, possibilities. <laughs> Fall Which asleep. Just, I'll just be standing here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Which, for ignite. Exactly correct. Yeah, it's literally like <laughs> like THC, psilocybin, synchronicity. Yeah, that's why I think he's a fucking idiot, though, because no one who was smart would get into, like, the fun aspects. Like, it'd be like Dan Bilzerian's shovels. Like, it, you know what I mean? Just something super fucking super. You you would attach Dan Bilzerian to something boring that your core fan base likes. Like, if you have a lot of people who want, like, my brother-in-law loves Dan Bilzerian, so... It, yeah, he does. He, and he works of course in he does. construction and renos, so it'd be like, okay, now we have Dan Bilzerian's fucking gloves. Where it's like, I'm a fucking, it's got Dan Bilzerian's fucking wolf on it. Of course I'm doing Dan Bilzerian wolf gloves. Like, you just do shit like that. Well, that's because D- Dylan is being far too smart. Right now, what he's not realizing is the zing is Dan Balzarin again is just the avatar for his father's financial crimes. And the reason why you do Ignite's a weed company, it's a weed grinder company, is that in 2015, 2016, there was a shitload of investor money in any sort of linked brand in the marijuana space because it was limited states were still legal. Very few places would lend them. So it's actually like a name brand version of so that's why he does it so it gets a bunch of initial money they then also pump it by he starts living in the ignite mansion which is rented he starts throwing all sorts of ignite instagram parties and becomes this whole sort of like ignite it's weed but only for people that aren't gay like you're like what what fuck you dan balzarian but that goes back into how instagram used to be for people who were just hot and you didn't have to say anything and now even if we you want are, it to be hot people that say something. Yes. Hi, and now, I'm Tara and Reed. saying things are not is not his forte. So as soon as it's like, oh, video is taking over for do you remember this is very specific, but do you remember when 
Instagram was just someone taking a handsome photo of themselves and then just a fucking grade 12 final essay of just bullshit spirituality and whatever whoever helped their life and they're sure. grateful and shit sure you've met my ex-girlfriends oh yeah what do you fucking think yeah i've seen i've had those written about that is something me. i think about Which, is like my if i left yeah, my wife do then oh. I would have to be like, this person's really act. Like, I can't imagine dating someone who is active on the internet. Yeah, what's weird is, like, I... Can you I imagine? Like... like, I saw... So I saw a TikTok the other day, and this lady was doing an outfit thing. And she was like, this is my outfit to go watch a guy. Uh, it's a first date, and he's doing stand-up comedy. Then we're going to go out afterwards. I won't look cute, but not too cute. And then, obviously, I'm like, all right, well, I'm going to the comments. And then... She makes a follow-up video of how he did. How and do then do? she she's like basically goes, Well, I didn't think he was funny, but he got a good reaction. What is this fucking the British comedy guy? What the fuck is going on? Exactly. And then I was like, and she's like, and I think I could do better, which made me almost crush my phone into a diamond. Um, oh, yeah. Because no, I was like, was so wait, this Angeles. guy does his shit. He does well. <laughs> <laughs> and then you have an active TikTok account, and you're going to, like, shit on his thing? I couldn't imagine. I'm putting myself in that position where it's like, you go, you do well, you're on a date, and then someone does a video about how you're shit? Yeah, Dylan, you don't live in Los Angeles. Let me explain to you what happens as a comedian in L.A., and this is the second part is... Like, it literally fills you with a type, like a like a, a warm pleasure that is so good, which is... Before Sounds when I first like moved, it is. It's like if someone pissed in your stomach, and you're like, oh, "This is what I've always wanted," but I've never been actually able in to say on. it. Both same time, oh. hopefully in. But if a little gets on, uh, is it used to be actors and actresses would show up and try stand up? And what was amazing is LA is really hard to do stand up in. It's not like it like an easy, warm crowd. Like it's like very looksy. They do a lot of things that really fuck up the situation. The hosts are usually somewhat in, inexperienced because they don't like. They didn't have Mark Breslin create Yuck Yucks, and Mark Breslin could only host, so like the, the hosting spot was not venerated in the way it has been in Canada or the UK for different reasons. So they show up and try and do stand-up, and you hear such – you get to see such amazing bombs, such amazing bombs. I once saw a group of very intense Latin men all stand up. Only one was speaking, but they all stood up, which was so amazing. And one of them went, have you done this before? And the woman said, this is my fifth time. And he went, whew, really? And then they all sat down as once. It was the most satisfying thing I've ever seen in my entire life. Just like, yeah, fucking see ya. <laughs> That sounds awful. It was so fucking, it's so uncomfortable. And now what you get are influencers doing it. And it's even worse because at least actors know how to be on a stage. But literally, if it's an influencer, they don't know, like, move the mic stand. They don't know, because it's like, a lot of it's just they started when they were a teenager, and then they've built this out over 10 years in a room in their house, and are now, like, trying to build up an act so they can monetize it. And so they're just like, all right, let me do my stand-up. I'm going to put this mug in my mouth. Oh, what the deal with the deal? Oh, it's fucking great. That's pretty wicked. So Ignite, it launches. Now, Ignite immediately goes public. Where does it go public, Dylan? Canadian Stock Exchange. Why? Daddy can't do anything on the American Stock Exchange. Yeah, because his dad is such a large-scale financial criminal. He cannot trade on the American uh, Stock Exchange. This is one of the biggest pieces of evidence that his dad is controlling the entire company. This is also when various employees of Dan Balzerian and Ignite start leaving and start being like, he is faking all of it. Uh, this is when he starts being a real steroid advocate because a bunch of people are like, because he tried to be a bit like, no, nah, I'm natty. And then he was like, no, I am not natty. I am the opposite <laughs> of natty. Well, this I'm is naughty. the thing about, and obviously he has ab implants and like all that shit. But this is the thing about um, steroids is when you do steroids, you want your final product to be the rock. Where it's like you fucking veiny as shit. Oh, yeah. But then mo the reality for most people is you do steroids and you just kind of – you look like a really good athlete who's not doing steroids. You know what I mean? Yeah, absolutely. It's also uh, – the big rumor, by the way, is Rock is uh, – Rock injects this thing. There's a thing that they invented that makes you very veiny that porn stars use to make their dicks very veiny. 
And the rumor okay. is the rock injects that into him. I'm going to say this right now. Reddit. Reddit has reinvigorated the internet for me in a way where I was like, this is what we were missing. This is what I want. Just a, just a bunch of forums where people are spouting off like, this is what I think is going on. And I'm like, you know what? I agree with you. <laughs> well, I mean, The Rock, God bless him. The man eats. The man is uh, he's truly perfect. Anyway, Danny B, everything's bullshit, but here's what else is happening. The real reason why all these scams and all these scammers are being caught now is uh that the inflation is bad and people are like oh yeah you know all that fake money well we gotta have some real money now and then he was like oh, 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 oh. and that's oh, yeah. why like 17 scammers are being caught a week is that you you it's no longer financially okay for a bank to give a loan on top of a loan that's being paid off by another loan uh, completely, and it's also that thing of there is the possibility in the bank size that you're looking at your. Fo- they also have hip to the fact that a follower count does not necessarily translate into income in the way that Dan Balzerian was presenting. What's also very funny is the social media algorithm changed and moved directly away from any other type of content Dan Balzerian was putting out into Dylan's point in that it moved towards all sorts of stuff where it's like, you need to speak to the camera and be the thing. And Dan Balzerian cannot do that because he's just an empty husk raised by a sociopath who wants to eat money. So Ignite just sort of trucks along hemorrhaging staff violently looking really bad. You can't buy the products really anywhere. It's all just fake. And Dan Balzerian is now giving sadder and weirder interviews. It's clear that he is still on the T, but it's not the high quality T. It's lowercase T. So he's got that weird, like that weird, thin, boozy bloat face. You know what I mean? Where it's a very defined neck, but you can't see any of the contours of his face. It's like, man, just, just don't drink that. Like vodka, vodka is the weirdest one that booze bags get into. Cause it's like, they're like, <laughs> you can just drink it all the time. And it's like, yeah. And you literally look like water is trying to escape from your skin. Yeah. I don't, gin is the one with the least calories. Oh, I thought vodka was the one with the least calories. Fun fact about me. I was gin, wrong. First time ever. Gin is the one the the least calories, but just, I think it was like the late 1800s, people were all into gin, and gin just makes you like a really weird drunk. Like, vodka, it's party time, but gin, you're like, I've collected a bunch of riddles, and if you don't answer them, everybody dies. I um I once saw a guy drink a bottle of gin by himself, and he fought a tree. It was fucking crazy. He fought the tree. Who? F- so wait, how did he fight the tree? Did he just punch the tree? Fuck you, man, man, man. Fuck you. Did Dan, you know the man? I, I do know the man. I literally, I remember me and my friend Paul said to him, "Dan, Dan, that's a tree." No, man. Fuck you. And it's like, Dan, that is a fact a tree. And then you heard a man with each hand punch the trunk of a tree and then scream very loud. And then walk towards the lake like all men drinking in the woods. Oh, I'm hurt. Better head towards water so if, I mean, so I can make sure that I'm in more trouble. <laughs> Let me die in the water. Oh, yeah. Dan Bilzerian tried to uh, – he wanted to be like a, an army guy in a movie. And he paid like $8 million to be in a movie. And then it was supposed to be like a 10-minute scene, but it caught, cut, cut down to one minute. That's really good. I really like how, by the way, that like this new school scammer doesn't understand he's dealing with the old school. Yeah, we'll take your money. You'll be in an hour of the movie. Get there. Why, why don't I have a costume? Oh, um, we cut that movie. Uh, where's my money? Fuck you, man. I'm Robert Evans. I just fucking did a bunch <laughs> of coke off of my own dick. But he won. All right, so Bilzerian loses $50 million in a year in Ignite. But this is the thing, like, is it really affecting him, or is it just like a loss for his dad doing some weird crime? Or both. Both. It's both. Okay. It's, no, it's just, it's just his dad doing a weird... It's, a, the, it's the eventual exposure of his dad's insane crimes, and what it is is he's trying to style it out so they don't just... He's trying to keep the grift alive, because I guarantee he only speaks to his dad when he is doing crime for his dad there's no one looks that goofy and has done so much evil as paul bilzerian if you're not such a piece he looks like a goofy janitor for a high school comedy and literally i guarantee he doesn't know his own wife's name who's this woman in the house that's my mom and your wife you've been together for 30 years never seen her before my wife would be asian and my sons would be successful his son or sorry dan's brother is a poker player 
And how shitty would it be if you're into massive financial crimes and your son's like, I'm going to take pictures of myself getting sucked off on a boat until I'm famous. And you're like, please don't do that. Please it's don't put me at I, risk. Nah, I, sorry, Dad. <laughs> while you were saying that, I was getting sucked off on a boat and posting it with a lit-ass machine gun. See, I disagree with you. I think that all of Dan Belzerian's life was made – he was made to do it by Paul, his dad. His dad went, we're – I figured that his dad, I guarantee, has figured this out of like we can inflate and fake a brand on the Internet. We turn that into money from a bank. We turn that into a company that's traded publicly in the Canadian Stock Exchange. I get all that money and then you die. Wait, why do I die at the end, Dad? I said you die. I say you fucking die. Yeah, it's a family thing. And I get, all of my cum goes in the garbage. You just haven't made it there yet, Dan. I get the money. I'll, I'll take care of the money and you just declare bankruptcy. Yeah, or whatever. I don't know anything I about finances. I guarantee that he hasn't thought that far ahead. Like, I guarantee he hasn't even been like, oh, and you declare bankruptcy. Like, I, he would be like, oh, and then you're the fall guy who goes to jail. I can't go to jail. I've already been to jail, Dan. You can't go to jail twice. That's the law. You have you have to go to jail for me. <laughs> yeah, his his trust was apparently $12 million. Or $1 million, or $4 million, or he never had a trust, or he gave his trust to his brother. That's what he says. He gave his trust to <laughs> Okay, fuck you. Like, fuck off. I made like, too much money playing poker on a boat with James Garner, who's my dad. Well, he also claims that he the reason why you can't find any records of him uh, playing is that he played in all of those Molly Chambers, is I think her name, all those secret underground celebrity poker games. Like he's like the whole pussy patrol with Tobey Maguire and Leonardo DiCaprio, that nightmare of the 2000s. Do you know what I'm talking about? Yeah, he was at say, how'd you make the money? He's like, I won $30 million off a billionaire in a hand. Yeah, like I and he claimed he's like I won four million off of Tobey Maguire and like, and he does it in all this way that can't be checked because like m that woman Molly like went to jail for running illegal post. She's not going to like reveal, but it's like no, you didn't. You didn't do any of that. Yeah, and then also when people say when and and you know this has been disputed. It's funny because he's so clearly full of shit, and it makes me upset that there's all these YouTube documentaries delving into the fact that he's full of shit, when you can clearly be like, yeah, that guy's full of shit. Like, you don't need someone. There's a really good quote about, I thought the Joe Rogan was going to, like, invited someone. No, someone on Joe Rogan invited a scientist to debate the vaccine with him. It was Robert F. Robert F. Kennedy Jr. debated Peter Hoytes. On the vaccine is who you're, the, you're specifically speaking about. Go ahead. So he was saying the this other scientist was saying the fact that you can the fact that you would even agree to do a, a debate yeah. means that the other side might have a point. So there's no point in the debate because it's cr you're you're being crazy and it's pure nonsense. So if you're just saying nonsense. And I'm saying th like true things. Now they're on the same level. Yeah. Just by agreeing to the debate. Do you know what I mean? So I 100 percent know what you mean. And it's basically Barack Obama's biggest flaw is that anything that he would elevate insane discourse to something that he would address. And what people have learned somewhat is you just ignore it. The reason why cryptocurrency didn't turn into a giant economic calamity is that no government outside of El Salvador recognized it as a legitimate currency. They traded it basically as a stock under Bitcoin was basically a stock recognized, but the rest of it was just unregulated wackiness. And when FTX happened to just to illustrate Dylan's point a bit more, they said, you need to regulate it. And the American government's like, no, because then it becomes legitimate. And then we have to like deal with all of this fraud, all of this sort of stuff. If it's away from all legitimate resources, it's just a vacuum within those users who if they were not aware of the risk, that's horrible. You know what I'm saying? Like it differentiates. But where we are now is literally I believe in good things. And then Dylan would be like, well, I think cottage cheese is Jesus. And it's like, well, that's not the same argument we're having. Yeah. But now you've legitimized it because it's like, well, there's two points. There's two sides to this argument. You know, X or xylophone. Like what the fuck? Yeah. No, it's 100% correct. Also, well, as a result of that, is, I bought you, Peter Hoytes' book, okay. which gives you a really good background on uh, how people manipulate science. Because a bunch of it's like, yeah, anyone can get a scientific journal published. Like, it's not hard. You just literally are like, my name's John Scientific Journal. There, I published it.
there. It's in there. Yeah, it's a study. You can anything anything can yeah. be funded into a study. But that's the thing about the Dan Bilzerian thing, where it's like a Navy SEAL breaks down how Dan Bilzerian didn't go to. But you can also be like, like I, I think one of the best things on the internet is like bet, just bet. All right, you you were Navy SEAL, two broken legs. Bet <sighs> didn't happen. You pr- you prove that that did happen. I don't. E- I'm not even gonna bother trying to prove that you're wrong. You prove you're right. Same thing with the fucking boat games. Like, all right, how about a picture of you and fucking Toby McGuire doing a peace sign or something? Like, do something. This is why Dylan got is a fucking man and a fucking hero and an alpha with a fat dick and cool friends. Because that's exactly how you do it. Is like One they are three. four to five. Um, they are <laughs> they are trying to like out scam an alpha. And what always works with dudes, especially of this energy is just throw the competition back in their face. I became a Navy SEAL with two broken legs. Oh, yeah, my buddy did it with three broken legs. He's better than you. No, he's not. Yeah, he is. He is. And because they don't know how to they don't know how to up that. Like, the way you do that if you actually did it, which is like, oh, fuck, is he still stiff? And then you're on to another thing. But the thing to remember is Dan Bilzerian does not want to do this. Dan Bilzerian is a little boy who just wants his dad to know his full name. And instead, Paul Bilzerian is walking into Dan Bilzerian's room eating like cottage cheese and smoking and being like, Derek, Derek, where, where are those babes? I want to watch them die. Wait, what? Uh, <laughs> shut up. I gave you the loan. Now I get to piss on your favorite. That's the deal. Yeah, you. I get to piss on you. I get to piss on you, shit on you. Yeah, I mean, there's a lot of very clear self-esteem issues there. Like, the fact Good. that he has a solid jawline, but then also shaves his beard into a jawline is fucking crazy. So crazy. What's also crazy, and this is a big indictment speaking of Joe Rogan, that Dan Balzerian was on Joe Rogan so quickly. Like, everyone's like, you know, he vets. He, It's like, no, D- Joe Rogan is as susceptible to the internet manipulation as the rest of us. And he just was like... Wait a minute, this guy's got muscles like me, but he's tall and a beard. Get him the fuck in here. Yeah, Joe Rogan, I mean, didn't vet him at all because this is the other thing. I think the reason why the Dan Bilzerian thing worked is because Liver King has his shirt off and he's screaming like a crazy person. And then Dan Bilzerian is just calmly telling you insane things. Like, you wouldn't know Dan Bilzerian was nuts until you sat down and heard him talk, whereas Liver King is like, I'm eating liver inside the Pentagon. Try and make me leave. Oh, they're shooting me. And Dale Bilzerian is just like, hey, man, how are you doing? Pretty good, considering I did Navy SEAL training using just my hug. Yeah, I'm doing pretty good, considering the fact I could have been president, but decided not to be. Yeah, did you know they can award you a Medal of Honor just for if you see... 1500 chicks piss hey did you know that cameras. um i'm pretty fucking i'm pretty good at picking up babes dan bilzerian seems like one of those guys you'll be talking about nothing this is something by the way that three different comedy club owners have done to me just out of nowhere turned to me and gone i got a big dick big dick hero stories are super funny there's oh a man my who god yeah. passed on r.i.p but would just find a way to uh tell you you'd be driving to the worst gig of all time and then just at the point where you're in the car and there's going to be a stretch, he tells you a story about how he got his dick sucked and it was too big for the chick's mouth. Oh, yeah. Good gir- oh, fuck. He, you'd say, he would say, she was a good girl. And I would like, okay, I got to pull over and puke, man. Don't oh say that to me. There was another guy in a very similar situation just revealed to me. He's like, I'm a grower. And I was like, what? And he's like, girls always think I got a small dick. And I get hard, and they're always impressed. And I'm like, <laughs> I like that he's like, he's like, you're probably gonna see my soft dick. <laughs> yeah, that's exactly. Like, he was <laughs> such a like weird contingency plan. I mean, even I will tell you who it is off air, and you'll be even more like, what? Why would that man say that? Like it was, it was a very. Me. It wasn't. It was not Dylan. Dylan says I've seen Dylan's dick. Dylan sent me a dick pic in 2015. What a fine time that was. Yeah, that was good. That, I'll do it again. Do it now. 10 year anniversary next Woo. year. Look Can't forward wait. to it. Is it the 10 year? An- oh, it's the 10 and there was a lot of fun things happening. The 10 year anniversary of the 2015 fringe. Let's all head to Edinburgh and piss out a window. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Me with two young children. And I'm like, listen, I'm going to be doing cocaine for 30 days. You're on your own kids. Take my pants off. Shirt remains on to accentuate that my balls are out. 
Yeah, well, people need to know your balls are out. So Dan Bilzerian somehow is clinging to fame. He is looking more and more haggard and tired. I assume the uh, some sort of investigation is going into Ignite, and eventually he will be going to jail for his father's crimes, and his dad will somehow slink away and always assume he just had one son. <laughs> I I don't know if he'll go to jail. It seems like that if you go, if if a company started folding like eight years ago and he's still out still making some money like he started with in at that Larry King interview he had 19.2 million followers on Instagram just because he would post shitty photos and then people would you know talk shit on him like we're doing and basically add to his fame like we're doing right now what is his current I didn't actually look at what his follower count is now I had thought I saw something that it was a dip. There was a dip just because, as we said, like, just taking a photo is no longer a thing. I'm going to say no, this. No, he's very in... much at 32 million followers. That's so funny. You, Although, I will tell you, he's um, he's tough to find in that he doesn't come. Oh, my God. His fucking content is mental. Oh, yes. Oh, fucking yes. Because this is the next thing I was going to say is when does Andrew Tate show up? And it's literally the fourth fucking photo. The there fourth he, I was, photo is Andrew Tate. I mean, the, the first thing I say I see is him calling out fucking Israel's war crimes. So that's, uh, yeah. But can you please tell everyone what the photo he used for that is? That's a haircut. Yeah, he's getting a haircut. <laughs> um, yeah. Fourth one is Andrew Tate. I knew it. I fucking knew it. Because in the end, Andrew Tate is just doing. Andrew Tate is just. Doing the, I'm going to be fucking Obi-Wan Kenobi plus Dan Balzerian. I'm Yoda Dan Balzerian. I'm Yoda Balzerian. <laughs> do or do not, but you must make sure that woman cries. <laughs> His videos are very high quality, and he was the first guy to invest in Instagram as a business. No, he wasn't. But anyway, he was. I was. He was right at the start where you took a bunch of pictures to promote your fake lifestyle. And you know what? He created a bad thing that remains bad. So this one's for you, Dan Bilzerian. You're a criminal and you're still not in jail yet. I look forward to you being in jail. I hope somehow during the Andrew Tate trial, you stand up and try and get attention for yourself, not understanding that it's Romania and you're just shot. That would be really funny. <laughs> it would be good if you were not alive anymore. I'm a man. Bam. Did you film uh, that? That's his last words. <laughs> is, this, is it live? Dead. Yeah. No, it is, it is, but it's only on Periscope. No. I would love to have a comparison of like how ju trying to justify a person like Dan Bilzerian's success versus someone who is a piece of shit in the television media. Do you know what I mean? Mm, yeah. Like, who's the worst piece of shit? Hugh Downs. <laughs> yeah. Why is Dan Bilzerian deserve fame, but fucking this generation can't have Andy Rooney where it's just, Hey, when they went a place and they wanted, they wanted to know they would take money. Andy Rooney would be losing his, you imagine oh Andy Rooney, like someone doesn't accept cash. And then he's like, I'm going to stand here angry until 60 Minutes shows up with the camera, and it's going to be seconds, you film that giggly fuck. What did you just say to me? <laughs> Andy Rooney just losing it. Andy Rooney's remembrance of D-Day is one of the wildest things I've ever watched in my life because he's talking about death, murder, and mayhem that he witnessed, but he's using the same tone he uses to complain about post-it notes not being as sticky as he remembered. <laughs> so it's so just like, and the body's wrapped in the barbed wire. Five a man, not a foot from away, not a foot away from where I hit the beach, walking by a tank crew drowned in the seas. And all I could think is, I'm an American. And you're like, fucking Andy Rooney knows how to illustrate war. And it's so crazy that he used this skill and took it into talking about how cream cheese should be is always fluffy at the deli, but it's always flat at home. <laughs> <laughs> and then the camera pans down, and he's so fucking hard. He's a grower yeah, and a just, shower. Yeah, yeah, yeah exactly. He's they like, don't let me wear white pants because of this fucking snake I smuggled into the studio, boys. Anyway, Andy, I'm the original Bulzarian. Andy, are you shirt cocking it? Yeah, I fucking am. Do you think you think I survived D Day with a small dick and small balls?
I did not. I got big dick. I got big balls. So much so, uh, an artillery position saw me taking a piss. They committed suicide. So you turn the camera on, and I'm going to tell everyone here about how potpourri is too aggressive of a smell. <laughs> All right, John, that's fucking it. Next week, we're going to talk about... It's pretty... If you were just new to this podcast and you heard two fucking baldos do a podcast about how coogs are noise and then you'd be like that's dan bolzerian episode is going to be very pro bolzerian and you must yeah, be shocked i mean that's exactly what i was thinking if we, we went from milfs to bolzerian we're really confusing some dudes that are trying to get that beard grown out so they can join a manosphere reddit group <laughs> coogs are fucking noise bolzerian not noise that's next week 